My guest today is Annie Bougie. Annie, how are you? I'm great. How are you, David? I'm doing really well. I'm happy to have you back on my show after, what's it been, like two or three years? Something like that, yeah. yeah. What should we talk about today? We should talk about autonomous driving. Autonomous driving. That's a cool tech. It is. It really is. I don't know very much about it. Do you? I know a little bit about oh, it. Oh, good. Let's, I've well, been, you'll do um, most of the talking. Okay. Tell me, tell so, me what, what's um, the state of that, the, of that technology right now? Well, first of all, let's go into what autonomous driving is because yes, it's not please. just one thing. I always um, thought it there's was many just levels. like a driver, a car moving around with no driver. Is it more than that? Um, yeah. Yeah. Please, that would be on. the ultimate goal. Okay. So let's start from the beginning with um, there's level zero through five. Hmm. Level right. zero would be my 16-year-old son's 2006 Ford Fusion, which has zero, <laughs> zero. <laughs> like no autonomous driving oh, features no, okay, all right. whatsoever. It, okay, somebody, that's uh, just responsible like adult must be behind the wheel. Yes. Oh, my God, that's scary. Controlling everything. <laughs> <laughs> no, my son's a really good driver. Then um, level one is partial automation. So that would be um, like adaptive cruise control Okay. or like lane assist. Or um, What's lane assist? Lane assist is when it lets you know when you can switch lanes, you know, so it just gives the driver a little bit of help. Okay. You know, but um, still you have to be you controlling mean whether it. it. Whether it'll notify you if a car happens to be in your blind spot. Right, when you're thing. trying to switch lanes. Okay. And like adaptive cruise control will like keep the same distance as a car, but if you want to switch lanes, you know, you have to turn the wheel. Okay. Okay. So um, some, a lot of cars actually have that. Yeah. I've, no? Uh, I, my car mm-hmm. doesn't, but I've been in rental cars to do. Mm-hmm. Like a, I think um, Cadillac has some features. Okay. Yeah, and then there's level three. What is level three? Okay, so level three is like hands off. Okay, and um, you, the driver can watch movies or send texts or you know do anything, that, but they need to be available. They can't like you know go to sleep or anything oh, like okay. that. So uh, the um, car, their car has control, but uh, just in case of emergencies. A driver can right, step right. It might alert. Up. So, okay. um, an example of level three would be um, like highway driving. So, highway driving is for the most part very predictable. Mm-hmm. You know, there's not. Um, you generally don't have a lot of like pedestrians or you know okay. any anything like that. It's you know the the way the road is laid out is very predictable yeah. with merge lanes and guardrails so you, well, and stop you know signs yeah. There's a there's a finite set of variables. Okay. So um, another one would be like valet parking. So like you, you show up and it will, um, you know, go through the parking lot and park your car for you. Okay, so it so knows in advance what, yeah. what route it's gonna take or what, uh, what the entire parking lot looks like. Right, but the driver needs to be available and conscious and ready to drive at a moment's notice. Yeah, in case somebody walks in front of the car, for example. Right, in which case, um, if some th- somebody did walk in front of the car, you know, it would, it in, it would initiate its emergency braking and come to an abrupt stop, oh. and, well, why and would try a, to why avoid would a person hitting. Need to be there then. Um, the person needs to be there because if it comes to a situation that um, is outside of its range, like if you know if it's just highway driving, as soon as you get off the highway, you know the person needs to regain uh, control okay. of the car. Um, so it it will take over under certain circumstances. I see. So I think the Tesla Autopilot fits under this the the current incarnation of it i know they want to go up to level five but right now okay. it's considered to be level three all right and what's level four okay level four is um complete autonomous driving except that um the driver does need to be there in case um it can't figure out something but if it can't it will safely pull over to the side and park hmm. okay. um so the driver can be taking a nap nice yeah, this, yeah. Of, this has a lot of appeal to me. I'm yeah, but you still trips. have a steering wheel. You know, you still have all the controls in a car, okay. and a car can a driver can take control of the car. Hmm. So level five is like the nirvana. That is, you know, think of like a driverless shuttle, you know, or like a, a robotic uh, delivery car or something like that, where you don't need a driver at all. Ah, uh, okay. And it doesn't even have a steering wheel. It doesn't even need a steering wheel. Okay. It can just like do everything all on its own. Do, does level five exist today? Um, only like in certain like geofenced areas. Okay. So um, there aren't any like commercial cars that a person can buy that are level four or level five currently, yeah. but um, it's coming. So um, some of the cars, 
some of the car manufacturers are approaching this a little bit differently. Um, they may be going for like highway driving or, you know, valet parking or, you know, other, other kinds of controlled areas in level three currently. Um, mm -hmm. You know, some of the car manufacturers are going for level four. Um, so in a few years, we might see that. Mm -hmm. um, another thing that uh, needs to be considered is when you have autonomous driving, who's responsible in the case of an accident? Oh, okay, so it's you not know? just technology. Right, it's not just technology. It's legal and ethical questions. Right, and all of this has to go, you know, governments have to approve that this car is safe for the road because, you know, you can't have, you know, cars go have around. Have any governments addressed this already? Um, the German government is, you know, preparing for, a, you know, level three driving cars okay. currently. So um, I don't know exactly where they are with uh -huh. that, but um, they're planning that in the next few years. Okay. So I was at the um, car show in Frankfurt uh -huh. a little while ago, and um, they were all talking about their driverless shuttles. I don't think any of them were operational, but they had a bunch of them. You can go sit in them and, you know, kind of what the design would be for the future when this becomes available. Hmm. So everybody's thinking about it and talking about it and, and working on it. Um, another consideration is testing. So you need a lot of testing, you know, hours and hours of training to train, you know, all the machine learning models for okay. driverless cars. And um, you don't want to use a real car because even in a controlled course, you know, you don't want to be crashing all these cars. So oh. there's a lot of simulation that goes on. Oh, simulation. So everything happens inside of a computer. Right, right. Everything happens inside the computer. And then they can find out, you know, they can simulate the different controls that they have and how it would, you know, uh, control a real car hmm. and then find out how it's going to react. You know, does it know what to do in the case of, you know, maybe some different lane markings and everything, you know, Interesting. does it successfully change lanes as it should or does it like crash into an object? So the former would be better. Yes. <laughs> in my opinion. <laughs> but if it's a simulation, you know, then you just fix what's wrong, retrain your model, and try again. Uh, yeah, uh, fixing an, or having an error like that in a simulation is much cheaper than having an error in right. a physical car. Right. Which is still cheaper than having a physical car out on the on the road where there are right. external they don't, hazards. They don't do that until they're pretty far along. Right. Um, some people that I know that live in San Francisco mm -hmm. see the self-driving cars out there. You know, they they have driving certain through their neighborhoods. Yeah, yeah. What are There's they doing? Drivers are they just, are in they just there. testing, or are they actually? Yeah, they're testing. Watching? They're, they're testing and training. So there are drivers in the cars, Oh. but the cars are doing the driving. The driver is there, they're, you they're know, taking, because- They're taking a nap. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, they're not taking a nap. Uh, my friend was um, saying that at one time it was like really hesitant to like switch lanes and then she saw the driver like take over because it was obviously clearly not doing what it was supposed to do. Oh, okay, all right, so they're, they're there just in case. Yeah, yeah, but the scenarios for um, testing are also very complex. And, um, you know, they have like different levels of the simulation that, sure. you know, you have to describe. There's a lot of mm. random things that happen out on the road. Yeah. And most of it, the we as humans, we just react to it mm -hmm. without even thinking. Mm -hmm. So that's just a general overview of, um, you know, autonomous driving as it is today. You think, so uh, let me understand this. Uh, level three, does that exist today? Are there commercial vehicles out there yeah. that we can buy? Yeah, the but Tesla Autopilot is considered level three. Is that part of, I, I don't own a Tesla yet. So I don't either. Is that <laughs> is that just in, available in the Teslas you can buy or in every Tesla or what's the? Um, I don't know if it's available in every Tesla. Okay. I know the high-end Teslas. Okay. It is but where I, it can if I kind of a nice Tesla. That yeah, it, if you uh, bought a nice Tesla, you too could. And there's no level four. I think I heard you say earlier those don't um, exist actually out there. They market. are probably they're in test mode, but okay. I, they're not commercially available. What's your currently. prediction that when we when we'll actually get to level four, or get to level five? I think that um, we will start to see more and more car manufacturers release level three within okay. the next five years. Um, getting to level four, um, I think it's going to happen, but um, you know, I'm not very good about predicting, especially about the future. Okay. So uh, that's that's really the yeah. only kind of prediction there is <laughs> <laughs> is about the future. Uh, what's um, uh, let's talk about your future. What's well, uh, what's future. happening for you in the next few months? In the next few months. And then we're recording this. I should point this out in uh, the middle of November. Um, well, I'm actually working on an autonomous driving platform. With, you are? Um, yeah. For Microsoft? Yeah. Okay. Is this something you talk about? Um, 
we're working on um, it will be like a level three scenario. Okay. So I'm just working on one small part of it, which is um, helping describe the scenarios and creating the files where the scenarios can be created mm. for the simulation driving simulation. Um, is this so, is this just a general research type project, or are you doing it for a particular application for a particular customer? We're engaging with a car manufacturer, That's so I work in um, automotive uh -huh. for um, commercial engineering, mm -hmm. and um, we engage with several of the car manufacturers on you know a lot of different projects. Is any of your team's so, work published publicly? No, not yet. No. Was, is our plans to do that? Um, no. Okay. Uh, what about, so you've learned a lot about this, probably mm -hmm. from working on this project mm -hmm. and research mm -hmm. on your own. Where can people learn more about autonomous driving and common um, there's a There's like so many articles and everything about um, autonomous driving. I guess just, you know, search it on Bing or wherever. You just went on the web and just learned stuff. Yeah, yeah, there's <laughs> a lot of really good material out there. Andy, thank you so much. Technology is best shared with friends. <laughs>